Dividends and bonds are among the top options to earn passive income with your investments, which you can greatly benefit from both of them, but depending on your position, you may prefer to have more in one of them than the other. So to get straight to it, let's first break down what you need to know about dividends. For starters, dividend income refers to a payment you receive from a company that you invest into, where they do this to incentivize you to buy their stock, and a common example of this would be a stock like Home Depot, where they currently pay a 2.2% dividend on a quarterly basis. So let's say you had $10,000 invested into Home Depot. That means throughout an entire year, you would earn an estimated $220 from dividends, which would be $55 every three months. Now, if you've been following my channel, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of index funds. And for dividends, my favorite is the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF with the ticker SCHD, which if you didn't know, an index fund is pretty much an easy way to buy hundreds to even thousands of companies all within one purchase. So SCHD, HD directs the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, which means if you buy this fund, you are exposed to 100 companies that meet specific criteria to be among the strongest dividend companies in the industry. The reason I bring this up is because instead of taking on additional risk by investing into individual companies like Home Depot, Chevron, Lockheed Martin, Verizon, UPS, many companies you've heard of, these are actually among the top companies that are included when you buy the one investment, SCHD. There are more dividend ETFs out there if you are curious, which I've made an entire video on it, and we'll leave a link in the description below for you. But with a fund like this that has strong dividend paying companies, it has historically grown very well and has provided strong income for its investors. For example, the average dividend yield SCHD has paid over the past 12 months is higher than Home Depot at 3.38%, and looking at the performance over the past 10 years, it has also grown 11.5% annually, which includes the dividends being reinvested back into the fund. Now, a key thing to understand about dividends is that you have the option to reinvest the dividends back into the investments for future growth, or to take it as income. But to emphasize the importance of growth, if you had $10,000 in SCHD over the past 10 years, if you reinvested the dividends, your investment would now be worth $30,000. Where if you took the dividends as income, your portfolio would now be worth $21,000. So the key takeaway here with dividends is that you can still earn an income while seeing capital appreciation among your investments, and especially over time, this has a huge effect. Knowing that, here's a quick breakdown explaining the difference with bonds. So for this, I am specifically referring to fixed income securities, such as treasury bills, notes, bonds, CDs, treasury inflation protected securities known as TIPS, I bonds, and many more types. So an example here is let's say you put $10,000 into a 10 year treasury note that states it will pay a 4% interest. This pretty much means that you are lending the government $10,000 where they ensure you that they're going to pay you 4%, which is $400 per year in interest. And for T notes, they typically pay semi annually. So this means every six months you would get paid $200. And after doing this for 10 years, that means you would have collected $4,000 in interest throughout the term, where at the end of the 10th year, you would then receive your initial $10,000 back. This same concept applies to the majority of fixed income securities, although the underlying structures will be slightly different. The main view is that with treasury bills, they're typically going to have timeframes between four to 52 weeks, where the interest is paid when the T-bill matures, which is another word for when it expires. Then for treasury notes, they are between two to 10 years where you get paid interest every six months until the bond matures. Then there are CDs, and even though they're not considered bonds, they are still fixed income securities, but the key difference is that CDs, they are instead a type of bank account and are FDIC insured. For CDs, the interest paid varies based on your bank, where many are monthly, but you could potentially see weekly, daily, or even at the end of the term. And then to add on that, CDs will be in the range of three months all the way up to even 10 years. Another option could be treasury bonds, which are 20 or 30 year maturities, where you get paid interest every six months, then treasury inflation protected securities tips that have five, 10 or 30 year terms, and they are set up to protect you against inflation where you get paid interest every six months. And then for I bonds, they are 30 year terms, but the rates you earn rotate every six months based on inflation, but you can cash in your bond anytime after 12 months. And for these, you wait to get all the money you earn until you cash in the bond. Now there's many more types of fixed income securities that you could consider, but I didn't want to overcomplicate this video. But the key takeaway here when strictly discussing fixed income securities is that you are going to be guaranteed a fixed income over a specific period of time. Knowing that, here is a quick breakdown on the pros and cons to dividends versus fixed income securities. Starting with the worst parts for each, when you are investing into dividends 
particular investments like real estate trust companies or funds using options to generate the income, they are going to be considered ordinary dividends where they will be taxed as ordinary income across all levels. But if we flip to the pros, you can actually get qualified dividends, which means the dividends are paid out by a U.S. company or select foreign companies that trade in the U.S. and align with the U.S. tax treaty. This is crucial because if an investment pays qualified dividends, that means that you're going to get taxed in the long-term capital gains bracket that is 0, 15, and 20%, which you don't even need to hold the investment for the entire year like you normally would with the stocks and capital gains because with dividends, a payment can be considered qualified if the shareholder has held the stock for more than 60 days in the 121-day holding period that begins 60 days before the X dividend date. If you're actively trading, you may want to read over that again and ensure what you are doing. But for those that are like me that are long-term investing, just know an investment like SCHD offers 100% qualified dividends. And if you hold it long, it'll provide better tax advantages than any other option. On the other end, CDs are taxed as ordinary income, but for US treasuries, you are at least exempt from state and local income taxes. And please note that there are securities like municipal bonds that are generally exempt from federal tax taxes and may also be exempt from state and local taxes too. But that can also be offset by the lower rates that they typically offer to investors. Besides that, if you are investing into dividends, you are going to be taking on higher risk because no one knows what's going to happen in the market, especially short term. Whereas for fixed income securities, you will have significantly lower risk. But because of taking on the risk with dividends, you may be able to receive higher rewards as the investments could appreciate in value where bonds do not and only provide income. Now, many of you will greatly benefit from the combination of both of these. So here's a quick breakdown on how to utilize each of them and which one is best for you. For starters, understand that you do not need to pick one over the other, but understand the best ways on how you can utilize each for your own position. For example, the first key factor you have to understand is the income consistency as fixed income securities are much more predictable and especially stable with the income. However, I do believe with the right dividend investments, especially especially with a strong index fund, that the income can still be relatively predictable, but of course will never be as stable as fixed income securities. Because of that, when it comes to diversifying your investments, bonds are a great way to hedge against stock market volatility. And even though stocks are extremely volatile, an investment like SCHD only has an 8% overlap with the S&P 500. We're looking at the data, SCHD's worst year over the past 10 years was down at 5.5%, where the S&P 500 was down roughly 18%. Not just that, but when it comes to liquidity, which is how easily accessible your cash is to be used, for particular fixed income securities, they may be less liquid or involve fees where dividends are generally much more liquid since you can sell shares at any time. Although, please be careful with this because if the markets are down and you ended up having to sell your investment, that would be among the worst time to actually sell. And lastly, the most important factor in this, in my opinion, is the investment horizon because depending on your position, bonds are typically going to be for short term where you can get a guaranteed income without the exposure to market volatility. But for those that are long term investors who can ride out market fluctuations, benefiting from the income and and growth over time would suit you very well. Although dividends may sound great compared to just earning an income, there are times where having a fixed income security would be extremely important to have. For example, let's say that you have a significant amount of cash saved up for an upcoming down payment on a house. The most important part here is that your money is safely going to maintain its value for when you need it. If you've seen my previous content, you'll also know that high yield savings accounts are great for liquid short term cash, but with interest rates dropping and having a significant amount of cash that you don't plan on touching anytime soon, then fixed income securities would be a solid option. Besides that, another reason where fixed income securities are extremely important is if you are at or near retirement where diversifying your investments away from the stock market would reduce the downside risk for you, which is extremely important, especially at that point in your life. Also understand that you can invest into bond funds that publicly trade on the market, such as Vanguard's with the ticker BND. But personally, if I need to store my cash safely for the short term, I would much rather use a true fixed income security security like bonds or CDs, which if you are looking to allocate and gain exposure to a bond fund in your investment portfolio, 
from my experience, I would personally rather a strong dividend income producing investment like SCHD, which my next video is going to be on this topic and why I believe SCHD is the better approach if you are trying to gain exposure to the defensive side in your investment portfolio. So don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, which I'll have that video linked in the description below once it's created. Which while you're looking at that, if you are interested to start investing on a new platform, I'll have a link in the description below to some of the top options in the market, as well as some of the top high yield savings accounts, CDs, and credit cards in the industry. End of the day, I want you to do what's best for yourself, but because you've stayed this long into the video, I want you to know that I have created free learning guides that I think you could find great value from that relate to investing for beginners, or even my ultimate index fund cheat sheet that includes a ton of data comparing the best index funds I've analyzed. I highly recommend you check that out, which if you want to see how I allocate each of my investments and other exclusive content, consider checking out the Patreon I have linked in the description below. And as always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notifications button for future content like this.